Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flying Miata Garage. My name is Kyle. Today we're installing a Varus air oil separator. All right, let's go over the components of the kit. You have your main air oil separator body, the powder coned mounting bracket, the hardware for mounting it, an appropriate length of hose, clamps, and zip ties to keep everything neat and orderly. Now you also see here we have a sound tube delete kit. This is sold separately, but is required since we have a sound tube that has to go away. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna begin with removing the sound tube. On this car, since we have a shock tower brace, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the center section as well as the driver side section. And just to get stuff out of my way, I'm gonna remove the brake booster vacuum hose and this engine dressing. All right, we got a 10 millimeter socket loaded up so we can remove the bolts holding in the sound tube. All right, now that the sound tube is out, I'm gonna go ahead and get the sound tube delete kit in just so it's done. Got the firewall plug here. It just snaps into place. Nice clean finish. And the intake tube portion. Get that logo parallel. Now we're gonna remove the shock tower bars. I got a 14 millimeter socket loaded up for that. Now let's remove the engine cover. And this isn't in the instructions, but I'm gonna remove the brake booster vacuum hose uh, just to give me additional access since I'm gonna be reaching around working behind the intake manifold. Now comes the next step, and I'm gonna show it to you on a standalone engine since you're not gonna be able to see it while I'm doing it on the car. We need to remove the existing PCV hose. It's this little circular hose here. It goes from this purple colored PCV valve down to the bottom of the intake. Normally there would be a sensor here. It's not here on this car. Um, so it just pops off of each end. You do wanna be careful with the PCV valve, it's plastic, you don't want to break it. So you're going to fully remove this hose. You are then going to take your provided hose, and I just loop it as so. You're going to feed both ends down and back behind the engine. You're going to feed one end onto the PCV valve, and one end onto the intake manifold. Now, if you have a naturally aspirated car, you're planning on staying naturally aspirated, you don't need to worry about hose clamps. It's been proven that they hold up well because the engine's only under vacuum. If you do have a boosted application, or if you are intending to boost your car at some point, you do want to add hose clamps to this. That does make it a royal pain. This particular car is a 2019, currently no force induction option for it. I'm gonna go ahead and install it without clamps. Get ready for the struggle. There we are. Now to make this go on a little easier, I'm gonna add just a single drop of motor oil to each hose end. Okay, so that is on the PCV portion. So, now, take the other end, try again to get it down onto that lower nipple. No, so close.
All right, we finally got both of ends of our hose onto the PCB valve and on the bottom of the intake. Now you've probably noticed if you have a friend with skinny arms, it's a good idea to bribe them to do it. Maybe buy them their favorite beverage or something like that. Okay, so now that we're done, um, I also wanna go over a couple other things that uh, are not a good idea. Um, getting it from the bottom is not really feasible because the starter is right there. Um, and we also do not advise that you take off the intake manifold because there's a lot involved there and it uh, definitely complicates things more than you need. Uh, one good idea is to stick one arm in this way and get things lined up and then reach in from the top to get the hose pushed on. Um, that's the way we did it here and we are finally done with the hardest part. We can now mount the air oil separator to its bracket get it in place, hook up our lines, and button up the job. So we'll do that now. All right, let's go ahead and assemble the air oil separator. Now we have this bracket here. You'll notice there are two different mounting slots. The mounting slot that is closer to the flange with the other slots is for the ND2 application. The slot next to it is for the ND1 application. I'm gonna go ahead and put a drop of blue Loctite onto my mounting hardware. I'd like to do that just because I don't like things coming apart but it is not required. And let's get this mounted up. In a four millimeter Allen, tightens them down. You may consider leaving them loose. As you notice, there is a height adjustment. So you may wanna fine tune how it sits in your engine bay once it's actually in there. So let's at least get that snug. Back that one off. Have a little adjustment there, maybe snug it up a little more. There we go. Last bolt and washer to mount it in the car. So the mounting bracket, it bolts to this ECU bracket. And on the ND2, you might have to kind of tuck your harness block in a little bit. I'm gonna lay it over, line it up with the hole, drop in your fastener. Try to get this mounted low. And now we can tighten up our fasteners. Just check for clearances, make sure you're not hitting anything. Now we can go ahead and hook up our lines. Now there are two lines that are very important you get the order correct. As you can see, not all of our fittings here are the same. One of them has a check valve in it. The one with the check valve needs to go to the hose that routes to the back of the engine that goes to the intake manifold. The other hose that goes to the PCV valve goes to the one directly behind it. Let's use our snips, cut them to length as necessary. You may also kind of experiment with how you want your routing. Typical is kind of just right over the top here. Maybe even plug in your uh, cover so you know you're not hitting it. Make sure we're not pulled tight either. So this one is the front. This one cut. We can tie these up later with zip ties to make it nice and neat and orderly. But for the time being, they are there. You have two more ports. The second port goes straight ahead to the valve cover and the forwardmost port will go into your intake tube. You want a little bit of flexibility there because your engine is gonna move relative to the catch can. Technically that completes the install of the air oil separator. Now we just have to button up everything we've taken off. Got the uh, vacuum booster line, shock tower bar, and then we'll use some zip ties to tidy up the routing of the hoses. The brake booster hose is directional. It has a check valve in it. The shape kind of dictates where it goes, but just in case, the 180 degree loop is gonna go closest to the booster where this other end 
goes to the intake manifold. All right, now as far as draining the air oil separator, it's recommend you start by checking it every thousand miles or so and getting an idea of how much oil blow by your car experiences. Um, you may have to, uh, just due to vehicle constraints, unbolt the bracket from the PCM bracket to lift the Varus unit up to access the drain. The drain is the knob here at the bottom. Don't undo the hex, but just find that knurled wheel and spin it to the left to loosen, and oil will come out the bottom. That concludes the installation of the Varus air oil separator and the sound delete tube. I hope you enjoyed what you've seen. If you have any questions or comments, please give us a call or send us an email and we'll get back to you. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to our Facebook and YouTube channels, and uh, we will see you next time.